What's the matter? Nothing. Oh, yes, there is. Come on, what's wrong? I told you, nothing. There's something. There will be if you don't stop saying there's something. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Men! <laughs> All right, spit it out. What's bugging you? I told you, there's nothing wrong. I just spent the last two hours sobbing my heart out, that's all. Oh, so there is something wrong? Well, if you don't know, I don't see why I should tell you. And know what, for God's sake? Oh, it doesn't matter. Well, of course it bloody matters. What the hell's wrong with you? All right, if you must know, as if you don't remember. I only woke up at four o'clock this morning, went into the bathroom and tripped over you screwing the au pair girl on the landing. <laughs> oh, my God! You're not still going on about that, are you? <laughs> Fella caught a bloke and bandit his wife and he pulled out his shotgun. He said, I'm going to blow your knackers off. He says, oh, give me a chance. He said, OK, swing them. Because of all the criticism of successive football managers in recent years, the FA have now decreed that all future England internationals must be played in total secrecy. Probably a lot of you don't even realise that England were playing at Wembley this afternoon. The police had cordoned off North London, and no press or members of the public were allowed anywhere near the ground. But we did get a tip-off in the early hours of this morning, and we managed to get in there with our cameras and record this exclusive interview just after the match. Well, Bobby, you must be fairly disappointed with this performance. Well, obviously we're disappointed, yes, uh, David. I, I don't think the lads really play it to their fullest potential. Uh, I was particularly disappointed that uh, the lads didn't take full advantage of the fact that the opposition didn't turn up until 15 minutes into the first half. But, you know, when they did, we were only four down. So, in fairness to the lads, I think we can turn them well, yes. Do you think there were any encouraging signs? Yes, David, yes, I think so. Um, a lot of moves we've been practicing during the six-month run-up to this one came off extremely well, uh, particularly the uh, kick and, and the pass. And I thought our running out onto the pitch at the start of the match was really world-class, world-class. What about the opposition? Oh, well, they're a good team, David. Let's not forget that. And they played above themselves, of course. Yes, but are the Christmas Islands a really world-class side? After all, there are only seven men on the island. Well, yes, there are only seven men on the island, David, but uh, I thought that teenage girl on the left wing was absolutely tremendous, not to mention the rabbit. Yes, but of course you were beaten 27-0. Yes, but that result was very much against the run of play, David. I was very dubious about that 15th goal. Had that, had that decision gone the other way, I think the game would have been thrown wide open, wide open. Is, the score is never everything, David. I, I think we can claim a moral victory, and I think a victory in every sense of the word victory. Except perhaps the, the definition of the word victory you might possibly find in a dictionary. Well, one final question, Bobby. I think a lot of people were very surprised by your decision to play Kevin, particularly considering the fact that he was killed in a car crash last Tuesday. Well, I felt that for such an important game, it wasn't really time to experiment, uh, David. I mean, I think Kevin had been playing well up until his death, and I think you know, it was a risk we had to take under the circumstances, yes. Well, Bobby, thanks very much for talking to us. Uh, and I'm sure we all wish, Bobby, the very best of luck for the rest of this season and the build-up to those World Cup finals in 1986. When you're a star, it's very difficult to introduce people who are below your level. We only do this because, uh, of course, I'm cheaper than any other comp I've got. And I'd like to introduce one of the greatest groups of all time. They are... Uh, Carling's Black Label. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, here they are. Uh, Finn Lizzy. <laughs> Oh, 
soul, 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 good that you can talk about your problem. A lot of men wouldn't be able to. And I'm certainly glad that I was able to do something about it. But seriously, I don't think you should worry. I mean, you're not really impotent at all. Works every time. Ashley Mills are instructed to release direct to the public 30 tons of shirts, only £3.99. Feather and down quilts, hundreds, only £12.99 each. Heavy quality 13 colour patterns, birth sheet towels, £4.99. Latest hollow fibre pillows, £2.50. Special offer fleecy thermal under blankets, two for £1.50. But you must move quickly now. Ashley Mills Shipley, non-stop 10am to 10pm. At this time of year, we travel agents usually explain that holidays will be dearer this summer. Well, TWA fares to America won't be dearer. Not even the same. TWA fares will be cheaper this summer. New York, £329 return. That's £56 cheaper. TWA to Los Angeles, £449 return. £85 cheaper. And they're guaranteed. Buy before the 1st of March, and if you hire a car for two weeks, you'll get one week free. So you could save money flying TWA to America. That's all right. Know what I mean? Birds eye potato waffles, so I'm only versatile. They go with beans, bangers, bacon, burgers, fish, fingers, a fish, fingers, eggs in, eggs on, gam on, steak, chops, grill them, bake them, fry them, eat them. Birds eye potato waffles, so I'm only versatile. Peugeot Talbot and their dealers are transforming car buying with their fair deal promise. Now when you buy a new car from any Peugeot Talbot dealer, the price you see is the price you pay to drive away with delivery, number plates, six months, tax and a tank of fuel all included. Plus the unique double cover of extra care and six years anti-corrosion warranties. With all this, the Talbot Horizon LE costs just 3845 and the new Peugeot 305 GL Estate just 4995. It's a better way to buy a car. And that's a promise. From your Peugeot Talbot dealer. So talk to him now. Penon Dummy Champion Jack Thompson is after Bill Holmes' All England title. It'll be a tight match. Jack's first setup. And he's played an ace. And 
Bills replied, we have a bunch of Chris hats. Now, Jack's drawn a pint of trophy. And still. But wait on, Paul Bills left stand. Jack's away, and oh, what a finale! Jack's expert on tippling as well as toppling. He likes a brew with good head and body. He's only happy holding trophy. Trophy best. Head and body above the rest. Choose Lytham St Anne's for a relaxing, carefree holiday for all the family. There's lots to see and do and the kids will love it. For free brochure, phone Leeds 440188. atmosphere here at the Dom tonight. The bloke over here just said to me, I'm going to go out tonight and get some drink. Be a hugging drunk. What's going on? Well, what the bleeding hell is going on? Yeah, well, we What's to... happening? The world's gone mad. Well, I... Don't talk to me about sausage rolls. Well, Don't to talk to me about sausage rolls. She's on a course, right? Cooking for beginners. What did he teach you to cook? Sausage rolls! I come in for me tea. What's waiting for me? A chicken casserole? Beef in white wine? Sausage bleeding rolls! All week long I've had it. Why don't you cut the lawn? I'll tell you why I don't cut the lawn. It grows again. What is the bleeding point? He cuts his next door. I know he cuts his next door. I know he cuts his... He's a brat. <laughs> he, he gets manure. He's obsessed with manure. He buys it. He buys it by the lorry. By the lorry. Who in their right mind buys a truck full of crap? <laughs> <laughs> I go out there and he's spreading it on his garden. I said to him, Peter, why? Why do you keep spreading that on your garden? He said it makes things grow. <laughs> I said it makes things bleeding stink. <laughs> <laughs> it's like living next door to a sewer. It's got roses, rhododendrons, peonies. All you can smell is crap. <laughs> <laughs> say it with flowers, I'll say it with flowers. I'll say it with flowers. I'll fart in a mill bottle and send it back. <laughs> Come on over a weekend, he says. We're having a barbecue in the garden. <laughs> Far out, I'll be there. That is my idea of fun, that is. Stood up to me neck in crap, eating a jack of potato <laughs> and a bleeding sausage roll. What is going on? The world's gone bad! That Channel 4 is disgusting, you know, Mavis. It's no wonder that Mary Whitehouse is up in arms about it. All that casual sex on Brookside. So what? My husband believes in having casual sex. He doesn't. Yes! Sometimes he's that casual, you don't realise he's doing it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> At the dock, of course, in the Midlands, a very well-known pub for picking up girls. <laughs> what they don't tell you <laughs> is how bloody heavy they are. Here's this week's soap opera. <laughs> version of Dallas, where brawless bosoms heave, plots creak, and Jock Ewing is beginning to smell. Now listen, Bobby, if you don't let me run Ewing oil exactly the way I want, I'm gonna take your discharge into my own hands. I'm not gonna let you do that, JR. Ah! Help me, Sue Ellen, I've been written out. You got what you deserve, JR. Now I'm free and I'm gonna find myself a good optician. Pamela! I'm gonna have your baby, Sue Ellen. JR, you're back! What's wrong with it? Oh, I see. Now listen. Things is gonna be mighty different around here. What do you say, JR? <laughs> I said that. Oh, never mind. Miss Ellie! 
<laughs> oh, why are there so many speech impediments in this family? If, if only Jock were here. Who dug him up? <laughs> Who dug him up? It was you, wasn't it, Lucy, you venomous little dwarf? <sighs> Don't anyone come near me or they're gonna feel the rough side of my tongue. <laughs> Lucy, all the men in Dallas have. <laughs> it's the only advantage of being a dwarf. <laughs> At least I don't have hoof marks on the back of my neck. Please, 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 stop bickering. I've got next week's script. I've got to go into hospital to have an hysterical rectum. And then I'm gonna have both legs amputated. Then you'll just have to bum around like the rest of us, I guess. Someone's planted a bomb in my cleavage. Don't worry, no one will ever find it. Least of all, Bobby. <laughs> you leave Bobby out of this. He's just been arrested for entering a horse at the rodeo. <laughs> will Pamela find the bomb nestling between her bazookas? Is it atomic? If it explodes, how many will die under the massive fallout? Will Lucy have a happy youth or even one or two miserable ones? Will Sue Ellen indulge in rash talk or Millie talk about her rash? Find out all this and much, much less in next week's debilitating diuretic dose of Dallas! Uh, I was on the plane going to Australia and there was an old priest beside me. He says to me, are you nervous in an aircraft? I said, very nervous, Reverend Father. He says, have a nice glass of wine. I said, that's very strong wine, and he said, the Pope drinks that. I said, no wonder they carry him about in a chair. <laughs> well, they're very friendly, these Australians. This is because he says to me, how would you like to go to a midnight barbecue on Bondi Beach? I said, well, that's very kind. What do we do? So you go there about 12 o'clock, bit of kissing and cuddling, have a nude swim, grill the steaks, make love in the bushes. I said, I'm all for that. I said, who's going? He said, just you and me. <laughs> Down. You got to work your fingers to the bone. You got a swift touch, you got a shift tears, and you got to bring a single out every six years. It's hot, I'm bringing a stone so hot. It ain't easy, I'm bringing a stone. Y'all say, listen, there is always on the phone. It's the drag. Down. You got to leave a party on your own. Cause if you leave with a chick, you'll wind up in a mess. Fighting with photographers and wrestling with the press. It's hard. I'll oh, bring us down. So hard. Yeah, too much dope. Not enough soap. When you're the prince of pop, you really need a prop. It's just a joke, the smoke and taking coke When you're out in the high at the top Ooh, it's crazy, I'm bringing a stone I think I might as well bring a clown It's a bad, bad trip, bringing a stone It won't be long before my mind is blown A battle has come, I'm sitting I know I'm a stone and I'm sinking like wine is hot. I'm bringing a stone. Oh, hot. I'm bringing a stone. I just like the saints of all you people that have been loyal fans all these years, but I really love you. Come here. I like to show my appreciation. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to put an advert in the personal column, please. What's the message, sir? Gigi. 
I L Y A. A I A W. Full stop. I P C P Q. Comma. I M Y U P T P. Full stop. Y K and L B B. Uh, that's it. T Y T A. Oh, sorry. That's it. Thank you. T T P. That's twelve pounds. Uh, oh yes, you're just doing the same as me. <laughs> you, I, thank you. Five, ten. I'll just get you some change. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, can I put a personal message in the paper, please? Of course. It's BB. I N W T L Y. Stop. I M Y L. Stop. C I N S Y S. Stop. L O L. G G. G.G. P.B. Oh, G.G. I.L.Y. Oh, I A.L.A.I.L. Oh. Mmm. 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 I.M.Y. Oh, I.L.Y. A-I-N-Y. L-G-H. P. Y. M. N. Y. B. I-F-O. <laughs> this is Julie Robinson of Chepstow. She uses new baby face soap. How old do you think Julie is? We said 22, 23, but no. Julie's got two daughters, Mary, age two, and Tracy, four, from her first marriage, and six-month-old twins from her second. So how come Julie's skin is so young-looking? Julie. That's simple. I'm only 17. <laughs> Time me kangaroo down, sport. Time me kangaroo down. Time me kangaroo down, sport. Time me kangaroo down. <laughs> so, what exactly made you decide to become a snig boy? Well, like all me mates, you know, up round where I live, right, and uh, all me mates up at work, and uh, all me mates down down at the SDP office, they was all snigs, right? So yeah, I become I become a snig boy, you know. But not just because they was; it was like personal choice, you know. A choice not to get beaten up. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about the gang war last weekend? Oh, right, yeah. Well, me and a couple of thousand other snigs was down Scarborough, right? You know, sort of just minding our own business, like, uh, taking them back off the town hall, when suddenly this throdhead and a gang of spleenos come up and start disemboweling my best mate. Now, throdheads are these snig boys' deadly enemies. Oh, no, no, no. Throdheads are our mates. Turdies are our deadly enemies. Turdies are the ones who put brill cream on their pubic hair. That's dickabillies. Turdies are the ones who listen to Motorhead and cut their toenails with a chainsaw. Tur so anyway, turdies I... and gobbos. Gobbos? Bleed now, gobbos died out yonks ago. They become spooner boys. Spooner boys? So what exactly did they do? They throw turdies at throttled. So anyway, <laughs> me and me mates sort of start in with a Moulinex carving knife, right? When suddenly this copper comes up to me and says, Here, what are you doing in this neighbourhood, you thick skulled moron? So I goes to him, Here, who are you calling a neighbourhood? <laughs> and he says to me, Don't want any more of your lips, snig boy. And he nicks me. 
I think it's fair to say that the Snig Boys are probably one of the most controversial of the current youth cults. For example, it's part of your creed to shave your brain twice every day. Yeah. And to become a fully-fledged Snig Boy, you have to stick a live robin up one nostril. Well, it's live to begin with, yeah. yeah. And the real hard-case Snig Boys get together every Sunday morning to sniff the colour supplements and then dunk both elbows in a boiling hot pan of chip fat. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I love this video. Really really has one. The Earl was lying on his deathbed. He said, "Unto you, Miss Fortescue, I leave Homsworth Hall. There's 55 bedrooms. It'll be a thousand pound in each bedroom. Thank you, my lord." And to you, uh, Mr. O'Halloran, I leave Ulwig Hall. There's 57 bedrooms, it'll be a thousand pound each, but thank you, my lord. And where's Flanagan, the gardener? Yes, sir. Say, you, you crackpot. You poured whiskey over the lawn and told me the grass would come up half cut. <laughs> you said, you're getting sod all. You said, thank you, sir. How many bedrooms will that have? <laughs> And that's mercifully just about your lot for tonight. Uh, don't forget that next week your programme is coming from the Cocktail Lounge of Her Majesty's Prison Wakefield. But for tonight, that's just about all that we've got. Hey! <laughs> that's not the last of it. This is my final appearance on television, Chris. Thank you very much for having me in so many programmes. And I am now taking a job as a shepherd at the Bullring. Can you imagine? You've got to take what you get. <laughs> we leave you tonight. Try to tell him! What a cracker! We leave you tonight with... <laughs> Good night. Hortense isn't into reggae or heavy metal at all. She hasn't got pictures of the Boomtown Rats or Black Sabbath on her wall. Hortense does her own thing and she's only got one idol. She thinks the sun shines out of his biro. He drives her suicidal because you see. Hortense loves Adolf Hitler. <laughs> she hates the way Sting sings and she wouldn't let Elvis Costello tickle her. There is only one she'd like. You could say she'd found her Mr. Reich. <laughs> Hortense loves Adolf Hitler. <laughs> and she gazes at his photograph while lying on her bed. And fantasizes what she'd do if she had the real Adolf there instead. She'd check out his Luger and inspect his swastikas. He'd slip off his jack boots and she'd slip off her slippers. <laughs> she thinks Adolf's gorgeous. She loves his eyes. And the way his head goes flat on the top and the way his jodhpurs cling to his thighs. <laughs> Some days when she's depressed, a full bottle of gin she'll sup. <laughs> That's when she gets to thinking if she knew where he was, she'd dig him up. <laughs> Hortense isn't into reggae or heavy metal at all. She hasn't got pictures of the Boomtown Rats or Black Sabbath on her wall. Hortense does her own thing and she's only got one idol. She thinks the sun shines out of his biro. He drives her suicidal because you see Hortense loves Adolf Hitler. This evening's programmes on Channel 4 to close. Let's just take a look at the lineup for tomorrow evening. We open at 5 with our featured sport, left-handed crossbow grouse shooting. And that'll be followed at 6 by an introduction to Gaelic cooking for one-parent immigrant Tasmanian families. <laughs> then, following the news in Swahili, with subtitles in Sanskrit and medieval Braille, we present our popular soap opera, Kilimanjaro Side. And you'll be able to find out whether the Mubabwe family's pet locust really has broken his leg. And if Zimaro the medicine man is secretly an area organizer for Tupperware. Then at nine, we present a whole hour of music for octogenarian potholers. And that'll be followed at 10 by a repeat of Wednesday's documentary, 
one man and his tin of yellow paint. <laughs> a study in depth of the life and philosophy of double yellow line painter Gordon Wallace. <laughs> and to round off an exciting evening's viewing, we present the third showing this week of Alexandra Shlesnikov's film, Andrea, an eight hour long epic about the life of a small Polish snail <laughs> during the 1917 uprising. <laughs> well, that's the exciting lineup for tomorrow. And all that remains is for me to say good night to our viewing public. So, good night, Geoffrey. Good night. How do? On your way. Good night. <laughs> That's an old Bill. <laughs> oh, that's great, isn't it? They, they spend all the evening filling our empty glasses, right? And encouraging us to have doubles rather than singles. Singles. <laughs> and pints rather than arms. Arms. And then they get all shirty and throw us out for, for, for being pissed. <laughs> it's like throwing you out of hospital for being ill. <laughs>